Good. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we were going to talk Game of Thrones today, but it's over, so we're going to talk sports. Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot to cover, and the sports industry, immersive media, storytelling, uh, there's so many things we could cover, but since we have such a short time, we're going to focus on a few things. We're going to focus on immersive media as it relates to virtual reality and, and augmented reality, even though it spans the 2D world uh, as well. Uh, but before we get started, I thought it would be good just to provide a little bit of context on who, on who we are, uh, where we came from. Again, my name is David Offhauser, Managing Director at Intel. And I've had the, the fortune, uh, good fortune over my career to have almost always been at the forefront of what's coming next in terms of how fans interact and engage with content. So going all the way back to Netscape, NetCenter, and the portal, uh, which offered uh, sports fans in, 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 in one vertical the opportunity to connect with their sports online uh, way back in the day. Yahoo Sports and Fantasy Sports, before Fantasy Sports became what it is today and the future of betting. Uh, Bebo, which was a pre-social network, well, actually was a social network before Facebook came and ate everybody's lunch. Um, Justin TV and Twitch was at the forefront of live video on the internet, and then launching one of the first 24-7 live linear OTT services um, back in 2012 with the Pac-12 networks of all places. And then today, uh, with Intel Sports, driving forward what's coming next, which is immersive media, interactive media, and live sports with AR and VR. And I'm Jay. Uh, full name is Sankar Jayram, but I go by the name Jay. Um, I've always, also always been, you know, at what's next, except that what I thought was next uh, took about 25 years to become the next thing. Started doing VR at Washington State University in uh, 1994, um, but I stuck with it, knowing, telling people, no, that's next. Well, no, it's not. Mo mobile is next. That's next. No, it's 3D TV. No, that's next. So I waited, and now it is the next. Um, along the way, uh, started a company, IES, where we were doing virtual reality um, consulting and software and applications for many years. That was uh, then acquired by Vogue, uh, which I helped co-found, and that's where David and I met at Vogue. Um, instantly, I went, as part of Vogue, I went to David at Pac-12 to get his permission to put the cameras in the Washington State University Stadium. And he didn't say no. He didn't say <laughs> yes, but he didn't say no. If you don't say no, I'm going to do it. And so that, that, that's, that's how we met. And then he, 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 he joined Vogue. And uh, ultimately, we ended up with Intel, where I'm CTO and helping drive what's next. So, so enough about us. I mean, we just thought we'd give you a little bit of context. <coughs> what's, what's more important is what we at Intel Sports uh, are doing in the sports industry. And we're doing nothing less than completely reinventing the way that fans engage and interact with content. And we're doing that not just by reinventing how they engage and interact, but also the full stack. So if you think about today, we all can watch content on any device at any time, uh, but it's still really the same live linear stream. So we're, we're reinventing the whole stack. So capture, we have a, our own unique capture technology called volumetric video, as well as TrueVR, which uh, on the volumetric video is what we'll focus on today, and Jay will go into depth on that in a minute. Um, the production, i.e. the storytelling, once you can capture things differently, you can tell completely new stories uh, around sports, live sports, and, and on demand as well. Uh, the distribution, and of course, that front end experience. So we didn't tell sports are, we're revolutionizing that. We're working with the NFL, we're working with the NBA, we're working with La Liga, EPL, the Olympics. Uh, so we're doing this with big brands and enabling those brands and, those, uh, and their audiences to create those experiences that engage and interact uh, with, with, with fans. So a little bit of history, and I think we all know this, but I think it's good context, right? So when you think about storytelling and the fan and how it's evolved over the years, right? Fans would go to an event. Fans still go to an event. Fans would then evolve and be able to listen to that event on the radio while also going to the event. And then fans could watch on television, a black and white television, and then a color television, and then an HD television. And then today we're in this world, again, where fans can watch content on any device at any time, whether it's a two inch device, your phone in your pocket, a 70 inch screen TV, and everything and anything in between. 
That technology has been around at scale for five to eight years, depending on how you want to look at it. And today, we're in the midst of a business model disruption around that. Uh, we see that with all the consolidation in the media industry, and we see that with every media company and their brother and their sister and their aunt and their uncle launching an OTT service. This is where we are today. What we're doing at Intel Sports is what's coming next. Building off of the history of how fans engage, building off of these new business models to do really you know, one thing at the end of the day, which is create experiences. It's all about enabling fans to experience. So when you think of these experiences, you go back 50, 60, 70 years. And at that point in time, stories are being told on TV, maybe in some form or the other stories are being told with cameras, controlled by camera people who are focusing on, on the action. It evolved from that to multiple cameras, to color cameras, to telling the stories better with more graphics. And um, as, as you look through that evolution of the storytelling, but it's always been, there's a camera, and there's, there's somebody telling you the story, and you get to passively view it. With the advent of VR and AR and MR and all the R's that, that, come, you know, that come with it, you now have to fundamentally think about, okay, how can we leverage these new technologies to tell the story in a different way and have new engaging fan experiences? And if you think about the what and how of we start building these together, the easiest place to get that started is taking what's coming on TV and putting it in an immersive theater inside the headset, right? That's where things started many years ago. You could go in and you could watch a large screen TV, you can watch a movie, you can watch a sporting event or whatever. That's step one, where you feel that you're in a big theater with a lot of other people and watching and viewing that. Then we go from there to the next best thing, which is, hey, can I get a courtside seat? I'm in a headset, make me feel as if I'm courtside. And that's kind of the, where the origin of Vogue started, you know, that evolved into TrueVR and Intel, is to be able to put these 180 and 360 stereoscopic cameras, courtside under the basket, in the corners, wherever it's, it's exciting to be, you know, around the court and have a live experience streamed to your headset so you feel as if you are sitting courtside in, you know, one of the, you know, first games. Uh, that did with the NBA, you know, you sit courtside and you look to one side, Jamie Foxx was sitting on one side of the camera, and the other side, Vivek, who's the owner of the, of the Sacramento Kings, was sitting on the other side. It's a pretty cool experience, and we're streaming that all the way across the world to uh, high school in India, you know, as part of a, a test, test plan that we were doing. So when you put those kinds of experiences together, now you go from watching it in large screen to courtside. Now the question is, can we get on the court? Do I have to be courtside? How about if I want to be on the court? And that's when we start getting the volumetric. And when you start thinking volumetric, the way we look at it is we put cameras all the way around the field, and these are not 180 or 360 cameras. These are regular single lens cameras that are looking into the field from all directions. And we are triangulating and creating the volumetric space, recreating that of the entire, all the players, the ball, the officials and everybody else. And this is large scale volumetric. We're talking about football fields, soccer fields that we are doing. And when you take all of these data and you end up with what's called voxels. Now many of you are familiar with voxels. It's three dimensional pixels. When you capture anything on a regular TV camera, you're looking at uh, capturing images through pixels on the screen. But now we are taking that and creating the three dimensional pixel, which is a voxel. These are, you know, uh, kind of a graphic to show what three-dimensional voxel is not from real data, just to show what, it, what it, the concept is. So now once you have these voxels, you've essentially digitized the space in 3D space. And now you take away the limitation of having to be where the cameras are, and you can go to what we call a virtual camera. And when you think of a virtual camera, now it's computer graphics at this point, right? But it's computer graphics from real data, and now you take these red cameras, which are real cameras, create the voxels, and the yellow camera, which is the virtual camera, and the bottom right image shows the view from the virtual camera. So now you're able to take that camera and move down to the field. You can get onto the field. You can be in the quarterback's helmet. You can see what the quarterback saw, and you can actually experience 
the game in a unique way that takes you not from, from being able to see it on a large screen in a VR headset to being on a court side to be wherever you want. That leads into the true and proper 60, uh, uh, six degrees of freedom experiences of the future. But then all of this is good only if you create the right experiences. So when you have this technology, we are able to move fans, if you will, from a passive experience to a truly immersive and interactive experience. So rather than leaning back and sitting on your couch and watching a game, which of course you can still do, because it's about giving fans choice, but at the same time, fans can then actually interact and truly immerse themselves in the content. Um, we're talking about VR and AR today, so you can fully immerse it, but it actually works the same way on a big screen TV, right? Where you can actually interact and move around within the content. Um, this move from truly passive to truly immersive content, um, it creates, again, a whole new way for fans to experience that content, for the storytelling, for all the pieces around it, enabled by the volumetric video technology. Additionally, um, it's also about making connections and the social aspect of it. I think a lot of us here in the VR space, there's a lot of pundits out there who so, say, you know, hey, you put on, a, you know, you put on your, your glasses or your headset or some sort of immersive and all of a sudden you're isolated from the world. Well, we actually think about it completely the opposite, right? This is about creating connections with people you otherwise not, wouldn't be able to. So for example, I can watch the Warriors game uh, with my friend in New York with my friend in London, with my friend in Tokyo, and we can all watch the game together, connected to each other through this experience, right? So it's about actually connecting people in a whole new way that you would not otherwise be able to connect and experience the same game together. So now I wanna take you all on a journey for a moment. So if you'll take about a couple minutes, everyone kind of relax a little bit, take a deep breath. Um, think about what we've just talked to you about the technology, where we are, and I want you to imagine for a moment, okay? Imagine you come home from work tonight, you plop yourself down on the couch, it's a few years from now, and you grab your VR, AR glasses of choice, put them on, relax, and immediately jump into your sports world. And immediately on the screen, it's personalized to, who, to, to you and your favorite sports and favorite players and whatnot. And you start watching the news and the highlights of the day in this fully immersive experience. Yeah, you, you kind of get a sense of what's going on. You notice there's a live show going on. So you go into this virtual studio, maybe it's a modern version of Sports Center or House of Highlights. And you're on set and it's live. There's, there's some talent, there's people asking questions. And you're about to engage and you notice up in the, up in the corner there's a flashing green light and you forgot the Warriors are playing tonight. It's actually already the third quarter because they're playing out on the East Coast. So you immediately jump into the game and boom, you're courtside. You're sitting courtside, uh, which is your starting point. Uh, Justice Curry comes in and knocks down a three-pointer right in front of you. Um, you kind of get up a little bit, walk around, move around. You're, now you're under the basket. You want to sit or stand or walk around by where the players are sitting and get a coach's view. Uh, and then you notice that two of your friends uh, are actually watching at the same time somewhere else, but they're watching the same game. So using natural hand gestures, voice, natural human interaction, you navigate through and you click the equivalent of a button. You contact and message with your friends, hey, should we watch the game together? And they say, of course. So boom, instantly you're all in sync and you're all watching the game together. You're bantering back and forth about the game, you're talking to each other, you're catching up on the day between plays, and you're experiencing the game. Now, you might all be at a different place. You might be sitting courtside, someone might be in a virtual suite, someone might be under the basket, but you're all... And at, at some point, you decide, hey, let's all watch from the same angle, and you go up into you know, some, you know, one of your favorite sections within this virtual uh, world, but watching the live game. There's a break in the action, it's a commercial, but instead of a traditional commercial, you get offered to play a game. Who can hit the most virtual free throws brought to you by Toyota in the next X number of seconds? So you all, and winner gets a t-shirt. So you all play, and of course you win, right? You're gonna beat your friends. Uh, and there's about 30 seconds left uh, before the game starts again. You pop yourself into the virtual store. You pick out 
the t-shirt you want because you won, brought to you again by whoever the sponsors, let's say it's Verizon in this case. And you give them your shipping address because you're gonna actually get a physical shirt that you won, uh, marrying the physical and the virtual world. And you pop back into the suite with your friend just as play starts again. And the first play out of the gate, you see Durant come down the lane and just massive dunk over Serge Ibaka because they're playing the Raptors, of course. And you guys are out of your seats, so immediately you say, hey, to your friends, I'm gonna jump into producer mode, and I'm gonna take us on a little journey. And they say, okay, great. So now you're all following each other from the same angle. You jump down onto the court, and you become Kevin Durant. You are seeing the game, the replay, from the perspective as if you are Kevin Durant. So you come down the court, and you now are feeling what it's like to dunk. But that's not good enough. You wanna see what it was like to be dunked on. So now you reverse, and you, with a few, gestures, you become Serge Ibaka to see what it's like to be dunked on. You move around a little more and see, well, what was Steve Kerr's angle of that? What was the referee's angle on that? What was uh, Kawhi Leonard's angle who was not part of the play? What did he see on that play that was happening? And you're navigating and basically taking your friends through this as they follow you. Plays over, you jump back into live mode and you all kind of scamper, the game continues, and of course, it, it, the game's over and of course the Warriors win uh, and you all kind of say goodbye to each other and jump back into either some other part of the virtual world or back into your own physical world because the game's over and you're ready to have a snack or do whatever you want to do. So now take you back to, back to the real world, right? So you've just been through this imaginary place um, and description of this virtual sports world of watching and experiencing and engaging with live sports. But the big question, so I'll ask you, Jay, is, okay, that's all great, and we can all imagine, but when is this gonna happen? When will we all in this room be able to experience this? You know, as CTO of your business unit, I wanted to say, I could get all this done this year, but you should have used Clay Thompson because he came from Washington State instead of Curry or Durant. <laughs> I would have done it sooner, but since you didn't, I would say a couple of years. When you think about it, I mean, these things are, the concepts that David was explaining are not really that far off. There's a perfect storm that's happening out there. Um, 5G and uh, different kinds of speeds, cloud computing, AR, VR, display devices, social experiences, the, the new fans, you know, when, uh, when my kids watch sports, it's completely different from how I used to engage with sports. Right, the whole interactivity through devices is just a part of life, uh, which is very different from how you know a generation ago people uh, experienced sports. When you put all these pieces together, all of those are kind of coming together very rapidly in the next year or two years. While we are working on our end-to-end -end technology, we we had two core technologies at Intel Sports. One was the volumetric capture, and one was the through VR streaming of live uh, experiences and immersive content in, in, uh, live to fans. And we started merging the two of them to take volumetric based data and create this, those experiences for the fans. And you're gonna start seeing some of those coming on to the users. You know, you've already seen some of that. Uh, in the Super Bowl uh, this year, we had, uh, we were part of the Super Bowl app where you get, got some of the experience from volumetric and over the next year or two, all of this is gonna start coming together more and more to slowly converge on the kind of experiences that David is talking about over the next several years. But then, this is not gonna happen just by ourselves. We are doing parts of the technology, but we need to rely on a lot of you out there to get that going. So, we talked about immersive media, how it changes storytelling, how it changes the way, how what we're doing changes the way that content is captured, how it's produced and the storytelling, how it's experienced by fans. We talked about the technology behind it with volumetric video, how it enables experience to go from passive to immersive, the social aspect of it, and we took you on a, on a little journey, and you know, we know this is gonna happen in the next few years, it's gonna be there, but we can't, you know, as Jay mentioned, we, we can't do this, and we're not gonna do this on our own. It takes an ecosystem of partners, whether it's pushing forward with headsets, whether it's pushing forward with 5G as we were introduced 
uh, and talked about is so, so important, whether it's things like eye tracking, things like um, you know, video production tools, all of these pieces are really important. And so you know, my challenge to everybody here and our challenge to everybody here is for us all to get involved, to us push the pedal to the metal, continue building out the technology, the capabilities, the pieces that we're all building to be able to enable fans to truly go to where we took you today in our journey to experience sports in an entirely new and an entirely different way. So with that and that challenge, uh, we wanted to thank you for coming and listening to us today and learning about immersive sports and the next generation of storytelling. And we have a couple of minutes for any questions that you may have as well. I think we have a couple of minutes. Josh, uh, you're around somewhere? Session chair? Two minutes. Okay. <laughs> Hector. So, just a question about the, what, what's your opinion about the 360 on the current TV? That was mentioned before that, that something can be done, that, that you could play without any headset. Yeah. Without a headset. On, on the TV that's yeah. at home today. So, yeah. So, so the uh, just repeat the question. Yeah. So okay. the question is, is, is uh, hey, we spent today mostly talking about VR and AR. What about immersive media on a 70-inch flat screen TV? Um, and my answer to that is it's, it's probably going to be as or more important than what we talked about today, but we focused on AR and VR. But the way I look at it is, I'll use the imagine concept again, is imagine you have a game controller in your hand while you're watching a game and you can navigate a live sporting event through the game anywhere you want to go the same way you would navigate a video game so all of a sudden you as are, are able to be on the field be the player be the referee be a virtual sky cam looking down however you want to experience that game conceptually using a controller as a video game. Like that's one idea about how you can interact with a 2D screen. And that can be 70 inches, it could be 100 inches, or it could be you know, a two inch screen where you're using your finger to do the same kind of thing. That's, that's the immersiveness and the interactivity potential that we're working on for uh, a 2D world. Time for maybe, maybe one, one more. more. One more question. Will so, be real time. Yeah. So the question is, uh, would this be real time? Yeah. Yes. Uh, sports is something that you have to get to real time one way or the other. When you say real time, there's always a delay. They're you know, going over the internet, getting to you. TVs today faster. If you're watching on our mobile device, there's a little bit of lag. So those kinds will happen. But our capture and processing will be at the full frame rate uh, that we'll be capturing and producing. And that's, that's something that uh, we are working on right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank sure. you all. <laughs>